Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take a look at a great utility called Disks, which is available in most Linux distributions, especially those who use GNOME-based desktops. In Ubuntu and Linux Mint, this is just already installed, and all you got to do is look for the utility in the menu. It's called Disks. If it's not in your distribution, you can get it just by installing this package from the repositories. Look at Synaptic Package Manager. You can do this from uh, whatever installer that you use to put software on your machine. It's called GNOME Disk Utility right here and uh, it's available in most distributions. What does it do? Well, What it does is it helps you manage uh, the drives on your computer. This is my desktop computer and I have quite the assortment of drives in here. The first two drives on the list, well, the first drive is the system drive which is a 64 gigabyte SSD and it has the operating system on it. The next drive is a 180 gigabyte SSD and this one has the home folder and that doesn't leave me with quite enough space to store all my junk so I have another drive here that I call storage and this is actually kind of an interesting drive to have in this machine um, this is a 10 year old Western Digital Caviar 160 gigabyte spinning 3.5 inch drive one of the first drives to be put out with the SATA connectors on the back of it at that time it was it was made right when we were switching from IDE to SATA in home computers and I bought this not too long ago for a project I was working on a, an older machine and I thought this would work very well in it I ended up not using it and so I put it in this computer It was actually really cool when I bought it because I bought it new old stock and it was an OEM drive and it was intended to go to people who build and sell computers but it never made it for one reason or the other so it's like a brand new hard drive it's 10 years old the funny thing is is that I have another one of these drives that I actually bought 10 years ago that still works I've used it off and on for 10 years there's still no errors no problems the drive works perfectly um, I've heard some bad things said about Western Digital but this particular series of drives boy they were high quality anyway so this tool allows you to work and look at hard drives that are on your machine or stuff that you plug into the machine. It lets you see the, uh, I'm not quite sure what all the functions are for a, a, a DVD, but I'll tell you what, I have a blank DVD right here. I wonder what happens when I put one in. We'll let that load up. We'll see what that does. Cause I've never played with a, I don't, I don't know what it does with a DVD. But I do know what it does with an SD card or a USB drive. It allows you to get in here and you can format these drives. You can edit the partition. You can edit the file system. Uh, several different options here. I'll show you benchmarking in just a few moments and what that does. Let's see what we get now. I put a I put a disk in. And it's telling me that I have a blank disk, I would assume. Yep, it just shows me the... I can create a disk image, which means I turn whatever data would be on this disk into an ISO, and I can benchmark it. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know what it did. Anyway, um, if you have SD cards, USB sticks, things like that, you can come here and format them and label them and copy them and create images of them when you create a disk image it will create an ISO which you can then use to make a copy onto another disk so that's really cool now there's a couple of settings that I wanted to talk about and first I'm gonna look at the spinning drive this is what's really cool is that when you open this for your hard drives that are in your computer it's going to give you a status report it says disk is okay and for a spinning drive it says disk is okay and it gives you the temperature which is nice to know 
if that drive has any bad sectors on it it will also tell you here so you can keep track of that if a drive starts showing that it has bad sectors then that means that the drive is getting old and if you get too many uh, then it's time to get a new drive but it goes deeper than that if you look at the smart data for the drive there's a lot of different parameters here that the drive itself keeps up with now what is smart data it is a chip that is on the drive itself and it's a self-monitoring system and it logs things like the highest temperature that if the drive's ever been overheated it will tell you here also it will uh, tell you certain error rates it'll tell you how many times the drive has been uh, booted up and shut down and it will also tell you if you have any sectors that are bad uh, sometimes with spinning drives it'll try and write or read a certain area on the disk and for whatever reason there might be an error and if it sees that it will move that sector to another part of the disk that uh, most spinning drives keep a little bit of spare space for this so that when there's a physical problem that comes up on the disk itself and it can't read the data it will try and move that data to uh, this other space and a few of those is really not that big of a deal but if you start seeing this and that number goes up in other words you see oh like my laptop right now is telling me that I have four bad sectors on the drive the drive that's in it's four years old so I'm gonna replace it soon anyway but I'm kinda anxious to see whether that number goes up quickly or whether it stabilizes but if you start seeing a bunch of bad sectors it's time to get a new drive and there's a bunch of other things here in these thresholds a lot of this doesn't make a lot of sense but you can get a lot of information out of the smart data same thing goes for um, your solid state hard drives it'll give you the smart data for that it tells you the ups uptime this drive uh, that I have in here has an uptime of seven months and 28 days that's how long it's been powered on and this drive has been powered up uh, 1095 times and if I restart the computer that will tick up another notch so this drive is in good shape not a problem there so this helps you keep track of that and if it tells you warning your drives getting ready to fail then that means that you're gonna to have to get a new drive and uh, put it in your computer because you do not want a hard drive to fail uh, catastrophic failure of a hard drive means your data is lost so you need to be backing up anyway because it could happen at any time but that's another video we can talk about that some other time some other interesting things that you can do with this and I did want to talk a bit about this we're gonna look at the drive settings here and the first thing that I really want to talk about is the write cache with Windows this is usually set on when the drive is installed Windows uh, does this because it in, it makes the performance of the drive it makes it go a little faster uh, the system when it goes to write a bunch of files to the drive actually holds them in memory and then writes them a little bit later when the drive is less busy and this also helps the uh, the system the operating system to order the write in such a way that it's more logical so you get less fragmentation on the drive which is nice that's the upside this can make your computer go a little faster if you turn the write cache on but the downside of it is if your computer ever loses power and still has some of this information in the cache that wasn't written to the drive the next time it comes up you're gonna have corrupted files or files that didn't get did not get written at all and that will make your operating system become unstable or maybe not even boot at all or a, a file that you need to have uh, like your presentation that you were working on uh, the file is corrupted now you can't open it uh, all kinds of things can happen so if you're on a laptop and you've got a single spinning drive in it you can turn this on because the nice thing about laptops is, is that they have batteries 
So they never really, it's really hard to have a hard crash on a laptop where the power gets removed unless you take the battery out without shutting it down. But on a desktop computer that doesn't have a backup system like a UPS, then you might want to leave this off. It's actually safer. And with a solid state drive, having the right cache on is not going to improve your performance on your machine by that much. The solid state drive is already pretty fast anyway. But with a spinning drive, let's say if this computer had one spinning drive in it that didn't, you know, not like one of the new spinning drives that has the little SSD built into it and keeps a cache. We're talking about just a standard spinning drive. I may consider, I might consider turning that on anyway and just making sure that the machine doesn't get powered off without a proper shutdown because it will, it, it'll increase performance. Something to keep in mind. Other settings here to take a look at. This is the standby mode, and this will spin down the drive or put it in some sort of uh, 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 a, a less responsive state. Uh, some drives will spin down, and that will save power in a laptop situation where you're running off a battery but what it can do is that it increases those spin up cycles those power on and power offs you only get so many of those with a spinning hard drive so I recommend leaving this off and not messing with it if you don't absolutely need to do that spinning down a drive also if the drive spun down and then you go to work on the computer you have to wait for that drive to come up so it takes a second or two for those drives to spin up which is kind of strange like you hit the space bar to do something and the computer just freezes waiting to get to that hard drive so never a big fan of that this is for drives to keep them quiet uh, you can turn this on some drives have this feature and others don't uh, this will give you a performance hit though your drive will be quieter but it will be slower as well so I mean if you're in a situation where you're in a recording studio and you need the drive to be super quiet I guess it's okay but I've never messed with this just I don't turn that on either but it's an option and it's there and you can look into it some other things that you can do here and we'll talk about this very quickly is you can run benchmarks on your drives I've already benchmarked this drive and this was the read performance. Um, now, if the drive is actually mounted to your system, you can't do the write side of this because you can, uh, or the, the write benchmark, there's an option there when you open this up, like I'll show you here. Yeah, you have to uncheck that. And then you just turn this loose and it runs a test on the drive and you'll see it's uh, reading from the drive and checking the speed and all that stuff now this is a good way to judge drives that you let's say that you get a used drive from somewhere get a bunch of used drives you can plug them into the mach into a computer here and you can look at them and see what state they are you can check out your smart data you can run a benchmark and you can figure out whether this is a drive that you're going to going to want to use in another machine or whether it's time for that drive to be retired and sent off to the recycling center very useful tool here in windows i guess the corresponding application would be something called disk management and uh, disk management is okay, but this actually gives you more control. You can do a lot more with it. So there's the benchmark on my drive. One thing I did want to say, if you look at your smart data here, you'll see that you have the option to force it to run a test. I have never gotten the extended test to run all the way through on any of the drives that were currently mounted to the machine. I think that would be something that you would only use for drives that weren't part of the system, like you plugged it in and just wanted to check the drive. But the short test, you can run at any time. So I'm going to run a test now before I close out the video. And 
it's running that test as we speak. And it usually goes a little bit quicker than this. I didn't check I didn't choose the extended test, did I? I may have. Let's do the short test. Oh. There's the progress up there running the test on the drive. So anyhow, that is a quick introduction to disks and I hope that you enjoyed the video and you got something out of it. It's not a tool that you use every day. Of course, I do need to stress before I close out that you have to be careful with this because usually if you try and trash your system it'll stop you but when you're poking around with partitions and things like that on drives, uh, do remember that you're, you can be only a couple of clicks away from completely blowing out all the data on the drive. So proceed with caution. But for those of you who are used to working with such tools, this should be pretty straightforward. Thanks for watching the video. We'll talk again soon.